they could go in there and obtain the DNA sample without having that suspect's consent. Oh, you know what? I can't smell asparagus in my pee because I've got this rare genetic variant. You never know how a genetic test is going to impact you in ways that you can't quite predict. Hello, welcome back to the Crossover Connections with a Jack Wayne podcast. My name is Jack and I'm an Australian scientist and professor. This article is from the Scientific American talking about the terrifying nature of 23andMe is not because of the accuracy of the testing, but it is about the kind of data that these companies are collecting. It is to hoard your personal Personal data. Let's look back at the predictions this article made 10 years ago. Fast forward to today to see how many of those predictions are actually correct. This article talks about having a gene for hubris, Icarus-like gene for flying so close to the sun without fearing your wax wings being melted. The 23andMe crew were at the time in a dance with the US FDA as to how much regulatory oversight that they should be under scrutiny for, billed as a health and medical service, where they're being billed as a kind of fun activity to get into. And they were really trying to have a very, very light touch in terms of the regulations. They did not want to be put under more scrutiny or more rules than they have to be. They're a company, they're trying to make money. So less regulation would give them more flexibility to boost their bottom line. That's just uh, economics 101. They were really giving out genetic testing for a long time and people were spitting in bars and sending it into the service. And again, I'll reiterate 23andMe is the most famous version of this type of service. They're not the only type of service, so we're not trying to single them out, but this kind of analysis would apply to any private company that's offering genetic testing and you can really identify a certain range of different types of features in your genes inability to smell asparagus some kind of genetic basis can be used to explain that away and it's kind of fun oh you know what i can't smell asparagus in my pee because i've got this rare genetic variant kind of a cool thing to share at cocktail parties if you're really that way with your with your friends and family the fda had a bit of a problem with correlating this information to kind of health advice. Your service then needs to be verified, needs to be vetted to check for accuracy. And that's the last thing 23andMe wanted at that time, probably the last thing it still wants to this day. There is much more interesting things in your genome than novelty items. For example, the risk of breast cancer, the onset of metabolic diseases, and sensitivity to medication. Before you knew it, this kind of testing really veered much more closely to health and well-being, and almost being predictive, if not diagnostic of these life-altering diseases. So any kit that was intended to cure, medicate, treat, prevent, or diagnose a disease is according to federal law in the USA, a medical device. So something that the FDA has to regulate and really they have to negotiate with the agency to try and find out how much of these rules they would be under. And this journalist is very, very almost conspiracy theory minded about this in that the access to personal genomic biological data was the real gold mine here. The personal genome service is meant to be a front end for a massive information gathering operation against an unwitting public. Again, this guy's a writer, so very, very dramatic in their setup of the stage. Does this sound paranoid? They made the analogy to Google and they did say indeed one of the founders of 23andMe was married to the founder of Google during the time that this article was written. And Google also built itself as a servant to the masses, trying to build the best tool to help you find information. But over time, turned the information we were searching for into an enormous data set on what people are interested in that it could then service targeted ads into our feeds. So that really is the ultimate aim that to this day, really, Google still makes billions and billions of dollars from all the time. So the search engine for Google is essentially the data that we are submitting akin to the saliva sample that we're submitting to 23andMe. The money that they're getting from that isn't the value we're getting at the moment from the search result or from what we find out about our own DNA. It's the information they can keep and extract and potentially sell to others. And what 23andMe wants to do with the data is indeed to do with medical research, potentially giving all of this type of DNA sequence into a service that understands the variability in genomes. And I think that is very interesting work because the Human Genome Project, which was the biggest, most ambitious research project in the history of biology, trying to sequence every single base pair, every single letter in a complete human genome. Nowadays, because of that project, sequencing of DNA is a lot quicker, a lot cheaper, so it's not really as much of a concern as it once was. The samples they had access to were so few and far between, it did not reflect the variability across all the genomes across that many people because, well, it's just one genome for a start, and even then it's a reference genome made up of lots of different pieces. The fact that 23andMe has this enormous database of complete human genomes, that would allow us to make way more accurate predictions down the line.
maybe not in the moment about your asparagus and wheat, but maybe in the future, it would have that predictive ability given the statistical power so many genomes would give you. 23andMe was collecting all of these uh, biological samples. They made the promise to safeguard your privacy and to do so responsibly and to advance medical research, all these very noble claims. We've heard that one before. Back on Google's first launch, the founders insisted the company would never sell you out to advertisers. It admitted it would share aggregate information, but the company's privacy policy promised that information about you will not be disclosed to any third party without first receiving receiving your permission. That has completely reversed. Google is just selling our data willy-nilly and making a sweet profit off it. And the prediction here in 2013 was that 23andMe, like all of these services, would be under some kind of financial pressure to make revenue and they would eventually turn to selling our data. Let's fast forward. 10 years now, all those 23andMe spit tests were part of a bigger plan and the CEO wants to make drugs using insights from millions of customer DNA samples and doesn't think that should bother anyone. The whole premise of this article, they were able to use the enormous number of spit samples and feed this information, feed the genomes to their partnering big pharma companies and give them the basis, give them the ammunition to really ramp up the development of all of their pipeline drugs. We talked about drugs discovery on the podcast in season one but essentially this is a really expensive endeavor making new drugs and the biggest problem is that most of these drugs can't account for the true variability across the human population we are so variable in the way that we respond to medications and respond to different therapies that any new drug has a enormous risk profile in terms of both financially like it may not work so we'll lose a lot of money as well as biologically it may just harm a significant portion of the population and therefore it should never be administered it should never make its way to market like all the articles we talk about in the podcast this one is linked in the show notes below and if you read through it it's essentially a bit of a showcase of what 23andme have pivoted towards in becoming essentially their own version of a big pharma company at least those ties are so close they've got these enormous facilities they've partnered with gsk they also have developed new drugs cancer drugs that block certain proteins and they've developed it in-house after discovering a series of biological pathways built upon all of those spit samples people were submitting to the service. This article was featured in Bloomberg, so it focuses on things like stock prices and the amount of revenue they raise and all that stuff. And I think it paints a relatively rosy picture of 23andMe in terms of the promise that it can deliver, the drugs that it's helping to design in collaboration with Big Pharma and the impact that it's going to have on people's everyday life. Trying to spin that dystopian view in that 2013 Scientific American article into something a little bit more positive. The reason that it's not so rosy, the information that they've been collecting from all the people submitting samples can be used for other reasons as well. And this brings me to the next article in Vox. Genetic testing is an inexact science with real consequences. And this article highlights a quite an insidious application of DNA testing that it can be used by law enforcement. 23andMe is a private company, but depending on the application, law enforcement agencies could force 23andMe to disclose genetic information, citing exigent circumstances, if it's for national security reasons, or if they're trying to solve a crime, if they suspect someone of having committed a murder and their DNA is in this database and they can check that they've accessed the DNA, then they could go in there and obtain the DNA sample with without having that suspect's consent. In a recent high-profile case, authorities were able to track down the Golden State serial killer after four decades using DNA from his third and fourth cousins who had voluntarily updated their DNA results to a public site where people go and find long lost relatives. And what's more, this is a resource that police apparently routinely rely upon to help investigate their crimes. In the case of cold cases, these could be people that have already passed away. So they could help clear cold cases using this kind of resource. This really shows that giving this really personal sensitive information over to any agency, any doctor, anyone outside of, of you, that is something that shouldn't be a decision lightly made. As always, thank you for listening. I'm Jack. Hope to connect with you again next time around.